All right, Sean here, Shop Task YYC. Great to be here with you guys today. Today we're gonna to talk about frames. What is the frame and how does the frame impact our performance? Now the frame, quite simply, is this piece right here. It attaches the wheels to the boot. More than that, it's positioning the wheels underneath our foot. And we can move the frame side to side to put it under different parts of our foot. Sometimes we can move the frames front and back. So the frame is actually what's gonna position the wheels underneath our foot. Now, when I'm talking about performance and the impact that the frame's gonna have on our performance, I'm mostly talking about the stability and the maneuverability. Although the frame does have some bearing on the speed capacity of the skate, but primarily we're talking about the stability and the maneuverability. Stability is going to be the resistance to change. So how well a frame holds a position. So you're bombing down a hill, you're going super fast, you don't want the frame changing positions, moving all willy-nilly, you want it to lock in and hold a position. So high speeds, right, stability would be an important factor. Maneuverability, on the other hand, is the ability for the frame to change directions. Slalom skaters need something that's gonna maneuver quite easily so they can weave in and out of the cones and perform all those amazing slalom moves. Now, when we're looking at a frame, how can we get an idea of what kind of performance and if that frame is good for us? So our performance factors, or rather our frame design factors that are gonna affect our performance are, number one, we wanna look at the overall length of the frame, what we refer to as the base or the base length. And that's the measurement from the first wheel to the last wheel, and we're measuring from the center line of the wheels there. The next thing we wanna look at is the height. How high are we off the ground with any specific frame? Then we have the effect of contact, which generally is gonna mean the spacing between the wheels. And then we have the rocker. And there's different rockers out there, and different rockers are gonna have a different effect on our performance. So let's talk about the base. Now, the relationship is fairly easy to understand, but the idea is that the longer the frame is, the more stable the frame will be. However, a longer frame is less maneuverable. It's more difficult to perform intricate turns, slalom type maneuvers. A shorter frame is gonna be less stable, but it's gonna maneuver a lot better. The effective context, so that's spacing between the wheels. Now, generally speaking, the frames are designed for a specific wheel size. So back to this Igor skate here. This frame is designed for an 80 millimeter wheel. The spacing between the wheels is one millimeter. So our effective contact ends up being 81 millimeters between any two wheels. Now, the closer they can make this, the more maneuverable it's gonna be. One, because the wheels are closer together, that has an effect on it. And also because having the smallest space possible here also shortens up the frame. As opposed to this K2 uh, Alexis, where again, designed for 80 millimeter wheels, but we notice a much bigger space between the wheels, giving us a longer base, a longer effective contact, improving the stability, but it's not gonna maneuver quite as well. So you get the idea of how that base will affect our performance. Now let's look at the height, how high are we are off the ground. Now this one's a little bit interesting because the height doesn't have so much of a bearing on our stability kind of front and back, that more has more to do with the length, but a higher frame is gonna feel less stable side to side. And this becomes very important when, imagine my foot or someone's foot is inside the shell. Let's say you um, jumped off a curb or you're rolling down a set of stairs. If we put pressure on the inside of the boot here, it's gonna cause this tipping action. The higher the skate is, kind of the larger that tipping action. So the idea is I put a force here. If I have a longer distance between that force and the ground, it's gonna have a greater moment as opposed to a shorter frame, such as this one. If I put pressure here, it's not gonna have quite as a dramatic kind of tipping effect. So the height has a lot to do with the stability, especially when it comes to little jumps and drops and doing any tricks where you're coming down and the landing is super important. Or if you're a new skater, being lower to the ground means that if you do happen to fall, you're not falling, first of all, quite as high and being lower to the ground makes it easier to recover. So we see as the height goes up, 
The benefit, of course, is we can fit a bigger wheel generally under our skate, and there's lots of benefits there. But as we go higher off the ground, we're going to feel less stable. The um, rocker, so the rockering effect. So the rocker is the difference in height between, say, the second and the first wheel, or say, the third and the fourth wheel. If we look at this Igor skate again, this skate is built with a rocker, and the rocker is two millimeters. So meaning that this front wheel is two millimeters closer to my foot than the second wheel, and this back wheel here is two millimeters up from that third wheel, creating a two millimeter rocker, giving us a very short effective contact along with that big rocker creating a very maneuverable skate. So the rocker gets bigger, the skate is more maneuverable. However, as it gets more maneuverable, again, we're sacrificing stability. On a skate like this one, we would only ever be skating on two wheels. It could be on the back, it could be on the middle, it could be on the front. But because we have that very short base that we're balancing on, we have less stability. Great for slaloming, not so good for bombing hills. Now, the wizard frame here has a one millimeter rocker. And you'll notice that our effective contact is quite a bit bigger. This is the NR100 frame. So my effective contact works out to 101 millimeters. And with a rocker of one millimeter, we end up with kind of a rough rocker distribution of one millimeter per 101 millimeters of effective contact. And when we're in that sort of range, we still have good stability and we still have some of the benefits of the rocker, the improved maneuverability, but we're not sacrificing a whole bunch of stability for the maneuverability. We're kind of balancing both. That's one of the magic, part of the magic of that wizard frame. On the flip side, well, let's look back at this one really quick. So here, our rocker distribution um, is gonna be two millimeters over 81 millimeters. So um, one millimeter for every uh, 40.5 millimeters. So the wizard, remember it's one to 101, one to 40.5. So you can see when we're looking at the distribution, this one is way, way more rockered than that wizard frame is, right? So it's got a bigger rocker, especially considering the effective contact, much more maneuverable than our wizard frame would be. Now, on the flip side, we have something like this, an anti-rocker setup, where we essentially are only ever skating on the front and the back wheel. These middle ones here have grind wheels in the middle, which is great for grinding, but let's think about how it's gonna react when we're skating well. That anti-rocker, this means we have a really long effective contact, and the effective contact is essentially the same length as the base. So this is gonna make it very stable. This is gonna hold a position and it's not gonna be easy to change that position. It's gonna lock it in, right? So we see how that was gonna hold the position. Makes for very stable positioning. Imagine you're at the skate park, you do a big jump, you come down and you land, boom, it's gonna hold that position really well. And that's due to the effective contact being as long as the base. It's not gonna to wanna to maneuver so much. So that's part of the reason that aggressive skaters are using an anti-rocker setup, something like that one. Okay, so there we go. Talking a little bit about the frames. So one thing I mentioned briefly was that the frames are generally built with a specific wheel size in mind. Not very often are they strictly considering the performance aspects when it comes to stability and maneuverability? They're considering you know, the wheel size and how fast we can go and all that sort of thing. But remember, in any frame, oh, this one here, 243 millimeters, the maximum wheel size is an 80, but you could skate 60 millimeter wheels on that frame, right? And it's going to have the same length, it's going to have the same effective contact, so it's going to feel more or less kind of the same type of maneuverability. However, with that smaller wheel, we're lowering the height, creating a more stable platform. So we can play around with the wheel sizes on your frames to create different effects. Excellent. Thank you for watching. 
We're gonna continue on. We're gonna talk more about frames, so stay tuned. Appreciate all the support. Namaste.